So, hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode of um, Gary's Classic Cars. So, in this episode, we're, we're going to go to Scotland in the Imp. Like I said, I think it's Sunbeam Sport. However, the gearbox is a bit noisy. It's gradually getting noisier and noisier and noisier. So, what I've decided, I actually bought a gearbox not long ago, which is this one off uh, Andy Jones, our Hillman Imp engine builder. And he took me out in his husky that it was in and it doesn't crunch it doesn't wind it doesn't grind so what the plan to do is this week now it being bearing in mind it's wednesday evening i'm going next friday plan is to clean this gearbox up which is not actually that bad he's put me he's kindly put me some new seals in the gearbox drive shaft flanges that spray is just my carb cleaner I've sprayed on. I'm going to get the wire wheel on it, not tonight because I'm out tonight. Um, this is Wednesday night. Clean it all up, paint the plugs black and the, these bits here black. Just give me a bit of black paint and then that one will be coming apart and the gearbox going in. I've ordered my oil today so it should be here for Friday. My 80 slash 90 GL4 and uh, that's my next challenge it'll take me a few hours to do so probably saturday we'll help get up early saturday morning i'll get the fiesta out if it's not pouring down get the car in the middle get it jacked up and we'll set the uh video on for recording and we'll do a time lapse on taking the engine out so like i said to you in the past there's about six spanners a nine sixteenth a half inch a five eighths seven sixteenths five sixteenths and that's about it Phillips screwdriver, ordinary screwdriver, and the engine's out, and the box. So the plan is to do that on Saturday, put the new box in, fill it with oil before we put it back in, throw the engine and gearbox back in, so we'll do some videos, we'll give the engine bay a clean up while it's out, and then uh, back together and out in it Saturday afternoon with a bit of luck. Fingers crossed we're all good and ready for ECOS then, and um, any other horrors I find along the way um, which i won't because it's got a new clutch in so it'll just be a bit of an oil leak from the back we'll clean up because they leak on the scroll but apart from that we'll be ready to go and then i've got another little surprise for this red car which is hidden under my bench under there and it's uh, wrapped up in a plastic bag and i've had them for a while now and that's my next challenge to put on that i've just got to spend buy an air filter well, it's going to go to in 40s as opposed to Strongberg, so that'll give me a bit more torque. And also in that Union Jack box up there, I've got a lot of new imp bits, oil pump, valves, guides, studs for the head, whatever else I need. I need to get some pistons, crankshaft shells, big end shells. I've got all them ready to go for my new build, which I'm going to rebuild a new engine. I'm going to do a 1040. I'm a 1020 at the moment. I've got a Spurs Sports engine down there under, that, under the carburettors. So that'll be getting stripped. The head can go off to Andy. He can do his magic with the guides. I'll build the head up, lap the valves in, put the oil seals on and get the crank off to him and he can put a real oil conversion on it and spend some more of my hard-earned cash and then put it back in this and we'll have a a little bit more, well, we'll put it, ask him to put it on the dyno or build it, and we'll put it on the dyno with a cab so it's all set up properly. Anyway, that's all to come on the channel. So I'm going to choose to for now and uh, out in the fiesta tonight. Weather's actually stopped raining, it's dried up. So we're going to Wigan Classics. Speak to you soon. Okay, so tonight I've spent an hour cleaning up the, uh, the gearbox from uh, Andy Jones. And I'm now um, all ready to put it in. I've got a little bit of black paint to do on the um, sump plugs and around this, around here, just to make them as they should be. Um, but apart from that, it's all ready to go in. So tomorrow, transplantation or transplantation will be undertaken on the uh, sunbeam. Good morning, YouTubers. It's now Saturday, the um, 6th of April. So the plan today is to swap the gearbox, this one here, which is all cleaned up and painted, into this vehicle here, the Red Sport, as I have said previously in my previous video. 
got my selection of tools ready down here so there's not a lot got a sump plug spanner on far right three quarter for the engine mounting the five eighths and nine sixteenths to take the gearbox bell housing off and the uh, rotor flexes the half inch and seven sixteenths there to do the battery cable back panel all of the little ancillaries a couple of three eighths for cover my five sixteenths to do my choke cables a couple of screwdrivers clean bucket for the water dirty bucket for the gearbox oil and my new gearbox oil and of course my gearbox which i will fill up and put the drive shaft couplings in before we put it in the car so without further ado i've got the car jacked up ready i've just uh, started it it's now uh, 7 35. okay youtubers so it's now uh, 20 to 9. it's just took me an hour to get everything ready to take the engine out it sounds a long time and people in the imp world say oh you can do them in 40 minutes half an hour yes you can but i've been cleaning some bits up i've cleaned my exhaust up over there and repainted it the heat shields and the stone guards i've cleaned up so i've been cleaning as i'm going along the uh, air filter housing and bumper so it takes a bit longer i've also drained the oil in the gearbox because it's difficult to do so now i've got to just Everything's loose, it's just a matter of pulling the jack forwards, or lowering it slightly, pulling it forwards, letting the engine down slowly, which we'll do on a, um, a time lapse on, and then uh, it will not be stood here for five or six minutes just watching me chunnering on. Okay, well, as you can see, that didn't go according to plan. I didn't get it balanced correctly and it just dropped over to one side the engine but no harm done nothing's broken just means i've got a bit of a struggle now to lift the engine back onto the jack and the problem is that because it's an engine and box it's it's long and it's harder to um, put back together so what i might do is put the gearbox in separately and then just lift the engine back in separately after that because everything will line up because i'm not taking the clutch off so there'll be no issues so now I'll start stripping the, uh, the gearbox off the engine and we'll come back shortly. So YouTubers, while we just uh, got the engine out, I thought I'd do a bit of a clean up. And I noticed this thermostat housing here, which was at the back of the engine, uh, had a bit of crystallization around the gasket, around the joint. So what I've decided to do is we're going to uh, put a new gasket on because it's a bit of a pain to do at the back of the engine. But it's right against the bulkhead and if that had failed they'd have been in a right pickle on the side of the road so do it now while it's easier so what i tend to use is a bit of blue holomar and i put that around the a bit around the um the housing like so and we'll put a bit around the engine as well just to help it seal and these are only paper gaskets so they're they're not the best but they, they do do the job and then what I'm going to also going to do is put a bit of grease on the studs, copper grease. Because what tends to happen with these is it being steel and aluminium, they corrode and then you can't get them off. And then when you try and get them off, you end up breaking the casing. And then you're even in worse, even even worse position. So get me copper grease and just put a little bit on the studs just to stop that corrosion between the dissimilar metals and there we go and we just pop that back on it always goes off towards the fan way which is the fan housing just over there so we're happy with that not on the washer on and just nip it back up and then we'll give it a we'll wipe the ex, the excess off there's my washer there and i've put stainless nuts on these because they don't corrode and look a bit of grease on them it always helps them come off a lot easier so Snip it up. You see it squashing out there, and then we'll just go to the other side. That's squashing out there, it? quick nip, and jobs are good. And so now that's all serviced. Thermostat's new anyway. I'll we'll just wipe the excess blue holomar off with the glove and the cloth. And it's so much easier to do while the uh, engine's out than it would be. To do with the engine in 
that's another vehicle job done while we're here the clutch is all new so we don't need to replace or even check that that's, that's not been in that long so it's just a bit of cleaning up now and then uh, I'm going to clean the engine bay while that's while the engine's out there just give it a bit of a quick polish where I can't get to and then we'll put the gearbox in which is over there back in and then uh, we'll put the engine back in which is here separately Okay, so we've now got the uh, gearbox in place. It was a bit of a struggle. I basically laid down underneath the vehicle with my gearbox on the legs and I hooked it up and pushed the um, the mountings in right at the back, which you can just about see if I zoom in. There's like a little black um, mountain, which is just roughly there. There's one on each side. Now I've only put the bolts in loosely, um, not nipped them up yet, because what I want to do is get the engine in and get the back panel on and line the engine up with the gearbox and nip everything up and then at least we know the gearbox is square to the engine rather than having strain on the um, the donuts here so I've got all the bolts in the donuts I've got the gear selector to put on the gearbox is stood up on an axle stand and a bit of timber just so I've not got a stupid angle now this this one these have thrush washers on normally but I've got a taper roller um, release bearing so in theory when you put your foot on the clutch it doesn't slow the engine down whereas the thrust washer tries to slow the engine down or the carbon thrust so I've upgraded this one I haven't done it on the other one but I've done it on this one so fingers crossed well it's in good condition it's been on about three or four years now so no, no uh, real issues with it still spins nice and free it's not noisy so what we're going to do now is is I've got to get the engine on the the timber on the end on my trolley jack and then me flip the engine, which is a challenge itself, onto the timber and, and we'll get it up, get it in position and we'll do a video of us actually just pushing it in and, and put mating it up to the gearbox. Okay, so we've now got the engine on the jack. I've just jacked it up and lined it up. As you can see it's very, very close. The carburetors there and we've got a bracket on the radiator down there to contend with so we're there or thereabouts so what we're going to do now is just slowly jack it up and that's a bit precarious on this bit of timber so it does what it needs to do so the plan is just to jack up till I'm a bit closer to what I need to be I put my hand in the back and just check we're, we're there or thereabouts lined up with the clutch so we're not we're not a million mile out and we'll just nudge the jack in slightly now, I've got studs on this engine, so it'll, it'll just go in with a bit of a wobble. It'll just go in and just tap it up a little bit more. So let it down a little bit. We've got to just get the, um, the gearbox resting on the axle stand. That's it. And just got to make sure we get the spigot bush lined. It. Oh god, it's been a bit of a, an awkward one. Oh, my timbers fell off my gearbox. That's not helping. Right. Let's have a look. We've got a big gap at the bottom, so I just need to release the jack down a little bit. Get it lined up. That might be better. And we'll just give it a jiggle. No, a bit more it needs to come down, I think. Oops. Damned awkward these, and it looks a little job, but sometimes you just need a second pair of hands. My shoulder's aching, it's not helping. I've got no leave to push in. So why is it not going in? It's... Right, let's have a look underneath again. We're a bit at a skewy angle. So I'm going to drop it down, that's it. Drop it down a bit more. Right, let's try that again now. There we go. And we're in. So now we can see the bell housing is all close up. Just it's just all about getting the angles right. So what I'll do, I'll put a few components on now, get the nuts around the bell housing, top hose on, starter motor on where it's easy, clutch slave, which is this thing up here, hanging. And then we'll jack it up, put the back panel on, and that'll make life a bit easier. 
Okay, so now we've got all the engine bolted up, all the hoses are on, accelerator cable, choke cable, electrics are all rewired, starter motor, everything's ready to go. Got to put this on now, this transom. It's called a transom, which is a, it's the holder basically for the, uh, for the engine. So what I just need quickly to do, spill a bit of oil out when I was trying to get the engine onto the, onto the um, timber, which it's sat on. So I'm going to just give these hoses a quick wipe over with some brake cleaner. Just get rid of the residue oil. Cleaned up the engine the best I can and we'll just hook that up there. Oh no, we can't hook that up there. We'll put that down here out of the way. Because that's where it needs to go. Let's get a bit scratch that oil cooler so it's a job to take off. So first port of call, we get this, get this up now. These are very, very snug fitting. Sometimes take the paint off the car if we're not careful. You've got to line them up. Right, so we're on there. Now the thing what I've done with with my is that I've put a, a plastic gasket in between the back panels. And that's purely just to get rid of any uh, scratching when you put them on because they do catch a little bit. Now the idea with these really is you want to get these, you've got four bolts, two down each side, you've got six bolts and two nuts on the top. And the idea is to get these started before you put the engine, the weight of the engine on it because they're only a um, five sixteenth bolt and they're a bit tricky to, to get in to say the least. You have to be gammy handed to get them lined up. And a bit of a pain. But once you've got one started, they're not, they're not so bad. You're just getting we're jiggling it up and down. Right, there we go. I've got that one started there. Now we'll find the other washer. The washer there, my bolt. And we'll get the next top one in. And then that's the passenger side set up. Right, there we go. Once they're in, because the threads have been in and out that long, that many times, no rust on them. They go in dead easy. And the same on this side. It's a bit awkward, this one with the battery in on this side. You see, you get a bit of movement there. Just allows you to lift it up or down to get your bolt in your back panel. Now once these have never been, when these have never been off, they're an absolute nightmare. Because they're all seized and they end up snapping, the bolting and it's just, just disastrous. But most cars have been apart quite a lot, so there we go, that's that started. They are quite, they do come out quite easy. Now I'll just nip them up with a finger, not too tight, because I have to pry the panel away from the quarter. You see a bit of rash there, corrosion or damage to get my um, gasket in between which disguises a lot this is starting to get a bit of bubble in here I need to I need to start looking at doing a restoration on this or a recommission sooner rather than later it's been uh, a long time there's bits coming here there and everywhere on it now which most people don't see but I do right so this is my little rubber gasket I've made and it's a it's a Morris Minor or Austin A30 joint that goes between the wings and I don't understand why Roots didn't do this when they did the car initially so what I've done I've just cut it to make it fit and I just prise this panel apart a bit like that with a screwdriver and that just allows it to he says slide in I'm doing it because I'm Trying to explain it makes life a bit easier, harder. Right, that goes in there, and that should just just prise that apart. Probably got them bolts too too tight yet. Prise it apart on the quarter, and it just push. That's it. Just pushes in like that. And it finishes it off. Now what we'll do? We'll just nip them nip them bolts up with a spanner. 
and that clamp that side in and make the other side a little bit, a little bit, a little bit easier. Okay YouTube as well, it's now just after 11, I've, uh, I'm all fully done, so it took three and a half hours. However, that did include cleaning up and painting the exhaust and all the under trays and cleaning the engine off, cleaning up the whole area. My carpet's a bit dirty, so I'll have to change some of the tiles again and polishing the whole car. Um, so now it's time for a run. I've just topped the water up in the engine. So I need to run it for a second or two or a few minutes just to get it circulating around and then we'll go out on a test run and see how the gearbox performs. Fingers crossed, it's a known gearbox. There should be no more whines, no more crunches, and I should be a happy lad. Let's see if that's the case.